Hey guys, this is Tessa Jeffers with PremierGuitar.com and I'm here with Robin Fink from Nine Inch Nails and Alessandra Cortini and they are going to tell us about the gear they use every night on stage to make the magic. How are you doing today? Good? Very good, yeah. Alright, so we're going to start with the guitars, right? Okay. So, what would you like to talk about first? Well, this is um, a Schechter that was um, a prototype for a um, artist model that was happening for a minute. Mm -hmm. I use this on uh, songs where I'm employing the big speed. So yeah. like what what would be a song from the set that you would use it on? Um, I play this on the day the world went away and um, there's a few, there's a lot of, our master list of songs is nearly 70 songs yeah. that we pull from so. Are you changing um, it up quite a bit from concert to concert? Yeah. Okay. We're playing um, this run multiple evenings in most cities. Um, sometimes <clears throat> two or three or more um, shows in each spot. And so, you know, we're really trying to um, cover a lot of material from night to night to night. So what is this pickup? Hmm, that's a um, Seymour Duncan... Um, mini humbucker and do you it's not a firebird but a mini hum and um they, these switches uh, they turn them all off or they're um you know double you know humbucker kind of or they're split coil okay and um i don't use these two. Oh, okay and do you keep this tuned to a certain tuning and the roller bridge works pretty well keep it in tune this is um in drop d Standard drop D. You'll see there's a lot of um, guitars here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's most in part because um, there's many different tunings throughout so many songs. There's um, standard tuning and then drop D and then half down standard and half down drop and the low C and um, one guitar is tuned, every string is tuned to the note to D. Um, so would you say that There's a nylon string and a baritone, so they start mm -hmm. to kind of add up and then, and then there's a few humbucker kind of guitars, and single coil guitars and then all of a sudden I got too many guitars. <laughs> Are you switching pretty much song to song? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. What do, which guitar do you want to talk about? Next? Okay. This Ooh, um, is a Manson guitar. Um, I'm not that, that familiar uh, with Manson. Well, Matt from Muse plays these guitars. Okay. Matt Bellamy? Yeah. And, um, uh, the guitar tech with him now, Chris Whitemire. Uh, Chris and I worked together for a number of years and years. Uh, when Chris started working with Matt, and I guess got to know the guys from Manson, um, and somehow Chris put the Manson company and I uh, in touch, and they um, um, built this guitar for me, which I was really excited to receive. I really like um, the way it sounds and the way it feels, and it has a sustaining awesome. act pickup. And so are you using both of the of pickups on this one? Yes, I use this when I want, um, when I need to use the sustaining act. But there's several songs for that. It's pretty. Um, yeah. Um, and this is my other um, sustaining act guitar. This, uh, I bought this body on what is it, Stratosphere or some kind of you know online parts shop? Stumac or something. And um, Paul Waller at the Fender Custom Shop made the neck for me. And um, and there's been different pickups that kind of in and out. This switch I think splits the coils. I try not to touch it. And um, um, this is also in, in drop D. So between this and the Manson, they're somewhat interchangeable for me. 
Okay, so what is it about the Sustaniac pickups that you like? Well, it keeps the note happening mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, for single note melodies um, that, that are happening, you know, kind of part specific stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Is I'm that your main, like, T-style guitar that you're using now? I know you have another no, Tele. No, I have a couple okay. other Tele's. I'm playing through um, uh, Matrix uh, cabs on, on stage, and so they don't necessarily react like 412, you okay. know, magnets um, do. So Isn't that one of your things? The well, part yeah, of your playing, you I, I like miss the feedback that, and the you know, it's not happening um, with this uh, cityscape, with this deck, you know. Um, I the Matrix cabinets are there really for me to kind of feel the oomph of um, what I'm playing, but there's no mics in front of it, you know, it all goes direct um, to the front of house and to mm -hmm. the monitors and stuff. Um, but they don't, they're full range speakers, they, they have a horn in them and they don't they don't react to the magnets of the pickups like a Celestian speaker would. Hmm. So I lean on this uh, a little more on a few spots where I used to be able to get away with just kind of Controlling leaning it into the, uh, a cabinet. So That makes sense. Um, these are in no particular order, but Ooh, pretty. this is um, the Godin guitar I've played heard on um, for forever and um, it's got a you know too many pin midi j I don't really know what this does I don't I don't use it um, uh, it's got an EQ that I kind of shove forward for the last chord and a uh, volume that I need to remember <laughs> <laughs> um, to turn it on but it's great these are some of my new favorite guitars why? Uh, I love the way they feel and the way they sound. And after that, I mean, what else, you know? Right. <laughs> that, that's kind of it. So Reverend's um, like more of a newer guitar model that you're, you've been playing in the past few years, right? Yeah. Yeah, last year or something. Are you getting a signature model for Reverend as well? No, I haven't been I talking that. about that. But no? um, I played this one and another model. Um, this is the Sensei, and um, I love the pickups, the uh, hum cutters, Joe Naylor's hum cutters mm -hmm. that come. Oh no, excuse me. It is Joe Naylor. What's the name of these pickups? Rail something, rail hammers. Rail hammers. The other ones are hum cutters in the charger. Rail hammers uh, that Joe Naylor make outfits and puts these uh, in the reverence and um, I use the bass contour quite a bit for you know eighth note kind of chuggy kind of stuff so say like uh, a song know. like um, the new ship mirror which is sorry can I say that <laughs> you just did um, which is is very like aggressive but has a lot of the quicker notes would you use a guitar like this well I use a guitar Like this. The other reverend. The other reverend that I play. Uh, and I love it. Um, you know, between the two, <clears throat> the sensei is a neck through the different scale lengths between the two. Um, but they both have this stop tail uh, bridge, which I prefer to strings through. And um, this. What is this model called? Charger. Charger. And the, um, this has the hum cutter pickups in it, so it's a, it's a brighter, um, less output kind of pickup than the Sensei's. And between the two, I could, if they were tuned to the song, I could probably, you know, I could do any of these numbers. It just it's kind a of charger like a that field. I bring with me to the hotel and is in the dressing room and I record with and you know I, 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 like, I like that guitar a lot. Okay, so like if this you guitar. were, say you were at home, maybe working on something of your own or practicing or something, what guitar would you, what electric guitar would you? I have like? this one. Okay. 
and gray. Oh, so you say, is um, that your This one and, one? The, and the sensei. Whichever one's in my hands, I guess, you know. Okay, okay. this is the guitar <laughs> I've seen a lot. This is a Fender that Chip Ellis um, made for me in, in 2014, or I don't remember when, so, several years ago. Um, Speaking this of is a Firebird <laughs> uh, pickup. I, I, I didn't want a single coil because the single coils buzz in the lights and in my ears, and we're all on in-ear monitors and standing around in rehearsals or on sound checks or certainly in shows. I don't want to be anytime any of us hear it. Yeah. And the, the cycle sensitive and to the that. ears, everyone's head snap. Who is who, who is that? You know. <laughs> I, Not you. So um, I can, I think, pull one of these. Yeah, and it'll split the coil, but it just makes it sound less good to me. Um, this is a, some kind of Billy Gibbons humbucker. I forget. Um, but it sounds great, and I, I it love it. Too. I love the, you know, I love everything about this guitar. This is a um, no caster reissue that I got. I think around the same time, maybe 2014. <coughs> Um, it sounds fantastic. It, this is a stacked, um, and that, again, I think it's a Billy Gibbons BG something or other. It's a Seymour Duncan, <coughs> Seymour Duncan stacked uh, pickup that will also split if I wanted to. Are you a fan of Billy Gibbons? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's got a huge neck and a really compressed kind of, this is the brightest, cleanest guitar um, that I have. Um, it looks like it's been loved a lot. And it's dropped D. What year so, is it? Well, I don't know if it was, it might, I think it might have been new in 2014, but it was a, you know, a reissue of a no caster. Okay. This has got the really big neck. Gorgeous. Look at this one. Oh, wow. This is uh, with us for one single song um, that's. Yeah. Um, every string is tuned to the note D. Um, Do you know what I, song it is? And I can't. Yeah, it's um, the big come down. Um, and it also has a piezo pickup that I use, so I really couldn't play that song on those other guitars, you know. It's not like a, more of a big resounding acoustic sound? Uh, it's really bright and right. harsh. Um, it looks light, the guitar. It, if, yeah, it's pretty light. Um, I'm not using these pickups, I'm only using the piezo and um, I can't really reach for it for any other Parker. guitar. It's Parker Fly. This is... Um, the baritone guitar I play on several songs. I th it's tuned, um, I guess, standard baritone, with the exception of the low note isn't B. It's uh, C. Okay. So that's a Jerry Jones. I thought it was going to be A. <laughs> this is a Jerry Jones. Um, yeah. Is it the same Different model? than the Dan Electro. Yeah. Um, the biggest difference that I'm aware of is this bridge. Uh, I've had this for, I don't know, 18 years or, uh, you know, so it just has a sound and certainly. Years? I think so, yeah, something Where like that. Where did you get this guitar? At Black Market Music in uh, Hollywood. It's not there anymore, but. Um, what do you like about it? Well, it's. <laughs> Um, there are other baritone guitars, of course. This just happens to be the one that I happened across, and I've never really looked elsewhere for a baritone. This is just kind of what you. I um, reach for. I like the um, these lipstick pickups are really bright and piano-like for these kinds of low strings and. Um, There's been times I haven't taken care of this guitar and it's still... Still standing? Still stands strong. Have you so. had to do any repairs or anything? <clears throat> I don't think so. 
What about um, as far as like modding? I know you talked a lot about having people from a Fender Custom Shop do things for you. Do you swap pickups out a lot? And is that something that you're always doing, or do you? I'm not always doing it. No, I kind of did it. I had one great big shootout one afternoon in the year 2000. It's been an <laughs> afternoon. Um, put these Seymour Duncans and all my Les Pauls that I was playing at the time, <clears throat> um, which we'll get to. Right. Okay. Let me bring you a Les Paul. Sounds good. Now, this is um, one of uh, um, a bunch of Les Pauls I've got to play over the years. And um, I only have a couple with me <clears throat> for this tour, a couple Les Pauls. And, um, you know, when I was reaching for one or two to bring, this is one this that, is the one? you know, volunteer. Why, why is it's this It's custom one? and it's, uh, it's the one that sounds kind of the... It's, it just sounds, uh, it's the tightest sounding Les Paul I think I have. Um, so it's the sound, I, I guess also I have, I do have some affinity for some of the guitars and this would be one of them. I've just been playing it a long time. How long? Late 90s. Uh, Do you have a name for it? Um, this is called Nothing Face, I suppose. This is the, the Nothing Face? This is face? Nothing Face, yeah. Okay. One of our readers was wondering if you still play it, so there we have it. Yeah. Chris Whitemire pretty much named my guitars for me so that we can <laughs> keep them straight. Yeah. <laughs> This is the other Les Paul I have with me. This one, um, this is the first Les Paul that I ever uh, played, purchased. Wow, kind of a big deal. Um, I mowed a lot of lawns <laughs> and purchased this guitar. Uh, and I bought this in 1990, I guess. Um, it was the only guitar I had. Do you know what year that is? It was new in, in 1990. It was <clears throat> it's a colors edition. You can see where the um, fretboard is uh, was split from the neck. It was in a crappy guitar tree in a warehouse with too many people. Where did you? Uh, you know, I, and I ended up walking into the rehearsal space and it was face down and oh. and the fretboard had come away from the neck and I thought, oh man. So you saved it? Yeah, I just, I, I put a bunch of glue in there and some, borrowed some C-clamps and a piece of wood and, um, but I'm still playing it. But uh, this has a different pickup than your No Face, so what's... No, I think they're the same pickups. They are? It might, I don't it's just remember. Gold just that one. Ha yeah, it's gold plated, I guess. Um, ah, shit. There's Seymour Duncan's. There, an El Nico, two, and a JB. I think. Um, you may notice that um, my pickup selector is down here. Yes. And you see when. I started to tour with Nine Inch Nails. I wasn't ever using the neck pickup. Um, <clears throat> and the guitars were getting kind of waterlogged. And so the pickup was removed. And so I didn't need a switch at all. I just had a volume knob. And then later in life, I wanted the um, neck pickup again. But I would gotten used to not having that switch there. And when the switch yeah. came back, I was kind of breaking my knuckles on it. So um, Whitemire moved it down there. That was okay. the greatest thing to me. So Chris is the one who yeah. mods your guitars for you? Way or back makes when. Change. Okay. Yeah. So are all of your Les Pauls have the switch down? Yeah. Oh. This is a um, reissue 335. It's a 58 maybe or 57. I forget what the reissue specs of it is, but um, uh, 
I play it on, I think, one, two songs maybe out of the master list. So I don't, it doesn't see a lot of um, stage time in this run. But um, uh, I have another similar body style. So this I play somewhat more frequently. Um, <coughs> Um, so that's an Ibanez? It's an Ibanez um, John Schofield oh. artist model. Um, it's really solid and I just like the way it feels and it sounds great through uh, what I'm playing through for the songs. And, um, so a lot of jazz guitarists play this model um, or this body style. Yeah. So what kind of song would you play? I, you it's know? not a jazz um, sound. I'm, I, it's one with a big um, kind of uh, almost feedbacky kind of with howl to it. Um, it's got this cool, I don't know if that's brass uh, nut. All right. No more Do guitars. Do you want to talk about your mandolin? I don't really know what to tell you about it. Um, this you little got guy. an Epiphone <laughs> mandolin. Yeah. And you said you play it on. Uh, it's one got song? a pickup in it, and um, <laughs> you know, play it on. On, uh, I've played it on a few different songs through the years, but in this kind of master list, we're only. I'm only reaching for it one time. Yeah. So, are you, what would you like to talk about next? Amps or effects? Um. Uh, well, they're all in one case. Okay. Cool. So, so Robin, you've been playing yes. the F Axe FX for a few tours now, and, yeah. but you used to play, have like your Marshall amps, so um, why did you make the, that switch? Well, I've mostly been, um, always been touring um, with Nine Inch Nails with rack gear that's MIDI uh, preset switchable. Mm -hmm. um, Axe FX is the, is the obvious kind of culmination of all that technology um, in this day. I did, um, I think it was 2008, 2009, I did tour with Marshall Heads and an analog pedal board uh, in front of me. <coughs> um, for the first time, I thought that was going to be kind of fresh and exciting, and it was in rehearsal, but in, there were a lot of soft spots. and too many songs that I, you know, was playing hurt through this nylon string, through the clean channel of a Marshall head, oh. and it, you know, things like that, that it was too much. Did um, you have to think too, too much? In, in the give and take of it all, it was, I'm happy to be back to fine tuning part specific presets, because there's just so many of them. Now, you know, right. there's a lot of. Well, Nine um, Inch Nails songs are very intricate. And there's so. a lot of, um, <laughs> Um, you know, unusual soundscapes to cover and to. Um, Do you want to talk to about recall, a few of them? You know. Um, First, let's point out that Lonnie is that Lonnie's your tech. Lonnie Totman. Totman, and you guys have Totman. been working. Sorry. Lonnie Totman. Yeah. Lonnie Totman is your tech yes. since May. You said. This is Lonnie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Look at these wires, guys. Pretty remarkable. Yes. So, um, let's see. Should we talk about some of your pedals in here? Okay, sure. So, um, the uh, Proctavia I've used since as long as I can remember. It's always um, been my octave fuzz uh, pedal. Really, for as long as uh, if I had one pedal, it probably would have been that pedal. Um, and um, certainly, there's an octave, you know, an octave fuzz in the Axe FX, and it sounds great. But that That's sounds a little bit better. Okay. And um, a, a, a similar story with the uh, mi with the micro pog, the tracking of the um, um, pitch shifting just has a unique kind of subtlety that is still hard to em emulate with the Axe FX. Um, this is Industrial Electric uh, RM1N. It's a really noisy um, um, 
reverb unit that uh, Trent and Atticus used on uh, the songs on the recent uh, records, and that's really kind of impossible to emulate, so I used that on those songs. Um, the Red Panda Particle I used in conjunction with the uh, C. Sidman, which is like a skipping, randomizing, um, skipping um, delay uh, ca um, kind of chaos effect. Can you think of a song that that would be on? Burning Bright. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've always have an H9 um, kind of available. I'm really mostly using the warp tape preset. Um, Lonnie, can you tell us how thing how the signal gets from the guitar to the wireless and sure um, basically we don't have any audio on the pedal board other than a backup system uh, the guys at Mesa Boogie were kind enough to give us their excellent buffer and mm. uh, clear link balance system so I can plug a guitar in there if I need to to balance because our production manager asked me to double the length of the loom so it was getting kind of iffy the length it was going to end up being and so that runs into the back of the rack I have a simple switch there, cable wireless in, so it's really fast. Um, other than that, we got wireless input running into a custom-made uh, Coleman audio switcher. Out of that, the input runs down to the RJM effects gizmo, all the various pedals. Um, out of the gizmo, into the Axe effects, and out to a matrix power amp, out to two matrix 212s. So it's simple. Pretty, it's pretty simple. <laughs> it's been very reliable and, and a lot of uh, a lot of options. It sounds yeah. great. And we're running. Um, uh, we can I'm doing Robin switching for him on a Mastermind GT22 here. We have a duplicate out there in case he feels like hitting something randomly. Yeah. Uh, there's a wah controller. There's also a continuous controller that we assign various things to filters and so on and so on. And then the other stuff is related to all the other devices. Like for example, we have a slide setup that's completely wireless, so it's nice and convenient to move. But there's also a keyboard controller, uh, a mallet, a pearl mallet station for oh, wow. various mallet sounds and uh, marimba sounds. And what else, uh, there's a Moog there, all hooked up to main stage. Mm -hmm. So underneath the tray here, we have uh, a Motu interface and a MIDI interface so we can hook all that stuff together. So from song to song, you're switching all the presets? Correct. Besides almost, whatever you feel like. I'd about 99% like of the presets, wow. yeah. It's a big job. We give Robin yeah, a couple. Yeah, it is. It's a huge job. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so it's much. He nails it every night, too. Um, most of the time. <laughs> Thanks, Lonnie. You're welcome. You want to see the slide? Yes. Thanks, Lonnie. OK, Robin, so this is your slide. Um, it's an electric Hawaiian and tell us about it okay well um i tuned it years ago to a particular song i don't remember which one it was the first song that i started playing the slide on but um i just kind of tuned it by ear and ended up with c d and g everywhere a couple <laughs> of unison strings and then uh any song that i was going to play on this guitar thereafter i needed to play it in that um, so it's your own tuning i guess i don't really know how I these are, no are, are um, generally, you know, kind of tuned. Um, but um, yeah, it's written here. C G G D G C. And um, the um, volume pedal is kind of paramount for this thing to happen. And um, uh, I use the whammy almost never, but uh, I have used it in the past. I, we used to have a looping station where um, I did some kind of looping madness. Um, I'm not needing to do that this time around. Uh, and a, uh, a JHS um, gain uh, pedal, the kilt. Um, and sometimes I use the Ebo, which the Ebo and a slide on and cascading delays, and you know, I'm kind of blissed out. Um, what kind of slides do you use? Just whatever? Well, I like them to be this, I don't know what it is, but 
don't know what that is. Okay. It's a bar. But it's got a... It's not the... Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. Um, and uh, this pedal I use on one song um, in, with the um, Ebo and um, I'm getting some variety, some variation of the distortion harmonics and it's... That's a guitar disruptor. I really don't know how to talk about it. It's just... No, but like, uh, what kind of effect is oh, the Oh yes, this disruptor? is the um, Electro Faustus, Faustus uh, guitar disruptor. Okay. And it's very <laughs> breaky, it's gated. Um, and when I move um, this flux knob, it really dramatically changes the, I don't know, the particles of distortion yeah. that are able to escape That'd be interesting before they're the slide. clamped. Yeah. And, what song um, do you use that on? Uh, God Break Down the Door. Uh, and all these kind of ancillary instruments that come out on tables and stuff have these lights because oftentimes uh, it gets dark out of nowhere or the song begins in the dark and stuff like that. And you have so, a lot of uh, crazy lights in your show too. So. <laughs> oh, and they're, they're wireless. Um, and even, um, what do you call, uh, the, you know, there's um, a lithium battery from Big Joe's Lithium Battery. And Tanya at, at Artist Relation in, in Nashville uh, had uh, introduced me to uh, Big Joe, the Big Joe company, uh, who sent this um, sexy lithium rechargeable uh, adapter, which so that powers the whole thing to, down here. Yeah, it powers That's everything awesome. here. And we have them on a, a couple of different stands. So they're able to kind of come off on and off the stage with the... That's great. Yeah, and they work really well. Awesome. Um, and um, sometimes I'm left to improvise a little bit on this. And I'm really just using my ear because I don't know where all of the string, the notes are in relation to one another. Um, and that's exciting to me and sometimes yeah, it's, say. sometimes it's, it really works out. Sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't, you know, I'm getting better at it though. So that's one of the moments where it's like, um, anything can happen. It's just kind yeah. of like in the moment type. Some songs, yeah. Great. What kind of picks uh, are you using here? They're textured. I think Here'd Jimmy go. Page uses them, or he like used 50. to use them, or something. Who does? Jimmy Page. Oh, Jimmy Page. Led Zeppelin. We know. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> um, oh, a haircut. Yeah. I've really gotten really used to these. If I when I pick up a pick that isn't textured anymore, I, mm -hmm. it's certainly someone else's pick. They're pretty thin, though. Yeah, they're pretty thin. I have a very heavy hand, and any thicker than that, I, I think I'd have a problem. Do you always play with a pick, or do you play some finger styles sometimes? No, I love to play without a pick. Yeah, when I can. But during the I'm nine very inch comfortable nail show? without a. Sure. Mostly. Do you're mostly without? No, I'm mostly with a pick in in the show, but I'm uh, very comfortable without a pick. I like playing without a pick. Were you classically huh? trained? No. So. <laughs> Um, just taught yourself pretty much? Yeah, just spending time playing um, acoustic guitars and um, folk music. So if you're like at home and obviously you love guitar, you made your whole life out of it. So if you're just going to play by yourself and no one's around, are you going to play an electric or an acoustic? An acoustic. Nice. What? Yeah. what? guitar would you play? Uh, I have a Martin D28. Um, that's the one that's kind of right there in the stand. We didn't talk about that one, did we? At home. Oh, at home. Yeah. Do you have any acoustics besides? At home? Oh, no, uh, in the in, uh, the, in the show? No. The that, that nylon Godin, which is solid, but um, the mandolin, the backpacker I haven't been playing. No, I've gotten away with I'm not trying to add <laughs> yeah. right. any guitars to that. How many thing. guitars really do you have at home? Home? Oh, uh, I only play one at a time. Right. You know. Really? Yeah. Um, 
I really don't know. <laughs> 30, 40. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks I'm for having me. Excited for the show tonight. We Thanks. hug. Thanks, Robin. Okay. All right, now I'm on the other side with Alessandro Cortini. Hello. And hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. So you have a lot of interesting things to talk about because you're doing a lot of different, you're wearing a lot of different hats. Yeah, so it's, a, guitar, it's a busy, bass, it's a busy corner of the yeah. stage, but a lot of fun as well. Right, so what are you holding? Uh, this is uh, the main E guitar. I have mostly two tunings and it's uh, standard E and dropped D. So this is the main E guitar and it's a uh, custom shop master built by um, Jason Smith, Fender. And it's uh, what you would call a telemaster. So it's a uh, ah. 50s fat tele neck mm -hmm. um, and offset body, so a jazz master body. Um, and then I think it's a twisted tele pickup at the neck and then a Texas special, I think, at the bridge. Um, and then there's a stealth lace sensor pickup under the pick guard. Oh, wow. Which makes for some like it's interesting, hidden. you know, hidden underneath and makes for some interesting uh, sounds. Okay. Um, so why did you choose the Telemaster? I had uh, one of Jason's master built Telemasters from, nine, from 2008 or 2009 that I purchased used years ago and I really liked it. Um, the big neck came from Robin. You know, I've always used very thin necks coming from the 90s, you know, mm -hmm. mostly RG style necks. And I've, I've never really felt comfortable with big necks and Robin had these tellies that had a baseball bat. It's like, man, where are you going with that? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with those? And uh, but then I found myself going during breaks to his rig. It's like, oh, interesting. And then I started <laughs> liking them, steal it. liking them more than the normal ones or like the thinner ones. So especially in Fender World, and for for what this, you know, this um, performance is, they feel very good to play. Uh, but the telly body has always been a little too angular, and you know, with a little belly, it's always like, you know. <laughs> so the offset always felt like a better shaped um, body to me. So this is, you know, basically a, um, a more personalized version of what I had already purchased, oh, okay. used, and uh, it's been relicked obviously to death. I really, yeah. I'm a big cool supporter look. of the relic look and the feel. And uh, so this is number one E guitar. Uh, okay. And then number one E bass is the sister or brother, whatever. They don't have- Probably brother. Just the Android, <laughs> Android compare, uh, you know, Part, counterpart and it's uh, basically a telemaster bass wow, you know cool and apparently the first one the fenders ever built has never done on bass the the coupling of a offset that's body. the first one they've ever built yeah custom cool i was like excited you know not three other people would get excited about this well two <laughs> me and two others uh but you know <laughs> a jazz bass pickup 57 hand wound and uh, uh precision pickups uh and went in the custom shop and pretty thick 50s neck as well um, yeah, so but this has a blue. Yeah. The idea was I'd like to have an instrument where, like, someone went to the grandpa's his grandpa's basement, found a Sherwood Green or a Lake Placid Blue or Sherwood Green Jazzmaster and an old telly, and it just took them apart, painted it black, and made it look like a you know, short of putting a Floyd Rose there, to make it look like a you know like their axe, you yeah. know. And uh, and I mean Jason did an incredible job. He did. Um, so this is this is the one that I really play. Really cool Amy. coloring on the fretboard. Yeah, kind of darker. Mm -hmm. And then I have my main D guitar, which is from another another school, and it's one of the new Ibanez AZ guitars, which to me is incredible. Um, the neck is super comfortable. It tapers. Uh, it, the body is super comfy yeah, as far as it shape. Looks light. Uh, this is pretty much a stock prestige model. The only thing that was changed is that. We've put a sustainer and a piezo. A lot of the songs I play acoustic tone, like somewhat damaged or uh, um, the becoming, and so it's easy to have it here, you know. And same thing with a sustainer, you know. It allows me to have it here. They basically had to reroute and make a bigger space here in order to fit two batteries in the circuitry for both machines. This is a tremolo now, okay. so basically, part of me still lives with the idea that I still love Floyd Rose's or Edge bridges, <laughs> which I do but I never end up playing them. So I, you know, tremolo gives me the illusion that I, I can go back to it if I want to. Uh, but if, uh, if I don't need them, the bridge stays where it is. And if I need to detune or tune up because there's no time for a guitar change, I can just tune this up to E. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I love this and has Lumen Lay, so it makes it very easy 
to play you know in the dark and another one that has my lumen lays is uh, okay so this is uh, my first uh, LA Custom Shop Ibanez, uh, thanks to the guys at Ibanez and Michael Rigo. Uh, it's basically my dream for when I was 14 year old. It's a RG, maple neck. Um, pickups are from, uh, pickups are DiMarzio's from uh, Ernie Ball Music Man Van Halen from the 90s. Uh, and it kind of has the same sort of like routing of both on, you know, neck and bridge. Uh, the push pull for the split was added by my friends in Italy, Miji and Fago. Uh, which redid the circuitry. Wow. And uh, it's been all decked out and uh, changed the parts and whatnot. And it sounds amazing. Um, Treble no here as well to keep the bridge, you know, at bay when I don't need it. What company did you say was that? It's, um, it's two companies where they work together. It's uh, Miji and Fago. They, okay. they hot rider a lot of stuff for other guitar players too. And it's just, you know, special for this guitar, it just, and you're Italian. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah they're so. Italian. They're like uh, the best people to deal with, you know, Ibanez. Well, they do a lot of guitars, so but Ibanez is their world, you know. So, and so this was this is used for the more like in-your-face humbucker songs, you know, okay. not for the ballads. I mean, I'm just kidding. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, what percentage would you say you're playing bass to guitar? It really depends on the set list. It could go 70, 30. It could go 60, 40. Mm -hmm. It could go 80, 20. So like tonight in Nashville, do you know? Um, guitar, guitar, <laughs> bass, 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 guitar, 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 bass, bass. You have to be on your toes. Well, I don't. I just don't move. I have a little platform. I don't go anywhere. <laughs> Even though I have a wireless, it's just, you know, it's kind of like, it's like leaving the cage open when you know you'll never leave anyway. <laughs> so you told me that you started out um, as a guitarist, you yeah. went to school at Musicians Institute mm -hmm. in California. Yes. Um, but then you kind of got into synthesizers yeah, and I've music always, design. And yeah, I've always sort of like had an af affinity with, uh, with sound. And uh, I sort of went away from guitar playing as a, as a main instrument. And it became more of a part of the whole composition. And then I just ended up being kidnapped by synthesizers, <laughs> and old synthesizers, and then losing friends and family and everything. <laughs> well, we'll process. talk about your synthesizers later, but you have recently um, kind of gone back and you're playing your instruments 80% of the time now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What made you decide to do that? Well, it was a need for the band. Okay. You know, before we started this tour, uh, with integration of Atticus, which deals more with the electronic loop gotcha. sequence aspect, and the other part being that a lot of the new material is very much bass and guitar oriented. Trent asked me if I'd be, you know, opposed to dedicate more time to that side of the composition as opposed to the live arrangement as opposed to the synthesizers and I'm like I mean how Are many having fun? how many places give you a chance to reinvent yourself yeah. and go back to the old tracks and learn to play them on another instrument so to me it was you cool. know an advantage more than a disadvantage and it's been challenging because you know a lot of things they sound like they're simple until you realize you have to do them for five minutes non-stop under lights and you know and stuff moving so it's a uh, I still practice, yeah. like everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And then, uh, yeah, I can show you some of the other... Yeah, we'd love to see them. Um, I have a, a beautiful Talman, which is my backup for uh, like the tele, the more tele sounding stuff. Uh, right now is a drop D, but it depends what we need. Uh, this is just, as you see, everything gets painted black. Yeah. I've tried other colors, I just I go for a second and then, you know, like when you put them on, you walk out, it's like, yeah, I'll wear white today. <laughs> And then you go, oh, no, no, and you go back. That's what happens to me. <laughs> Same thing. So we have this beautiful Talman. And then as far as guitars, I have another backup to the Telemaster, which is another offset. Um, this one with a Schaubacher at the neck. It's more modern neck, so a little thinner and painted black. And this, uh, these uh, fenders are uh, super comfortable. They, just, they feel great. And so um, you're usually tuned to E and D. Yes. Um, There's a few songs where I, I'm down to C, but I use a Digidesign drop pedal for that. Okay. A digi not Digidesign, Digitech, sorry. Digidesign is the other side of <laughs> the gig. But What kind of strings do you use? Uh, on the RGs are nines, nines to, 9 to 42. And uh, on the, um, the Telemasters, they're 10 to 46. Okay, and your basses? Bass I don't remember, because we've been changing. I'd yeah. have to check. You're kind of working with it. It feels good, not sure. but okay. everything's Ernie Ball, Cobalt, okay. all of them. Yeah. And what about picks? 
picks I use um, I've, I've started with Gin Dollop gels the red ones so they're like heavy okay. and then uh, I would basically use one every song for bass they would just go out and at home I was using flow jazz um, excels uh, 88 and Those so they were able to actually make us black black on black 88 flows so that's what I use all uh, black all black and they last forever in fact uh, and I feel so guilty because I'm so used to buying them and they're like expensive because they're very good picks and they last a long time that I don't throw them anywhere anymore. I just put so at the end of the show, I go to a hotel, <laughs> I have a pocket full of picks that yeah. I'm like, well, you we could have just thrown them. Save but yeah, they're like the typical, you know, shape. They're a little slippery, so we sort of razor yeah. blade one side. Very sturdy. Yeah. So you're always playing uh, your bass with picks too? Yeah, I okay. used to have two different things for like, for the upright bass, for this one, the we should talk bass, about that which too. I use. Uh, yeah, I use this for the, for the perfect drug, but I use it as a guitar. Like I usually bend it this way oh, and play it and play cool. it this way because it's easier you know it's much it. easier I love that it, song. Yeah, this way it's I'm, I'm not good with intonation if I look at it this way you know what I mean so just winging it you can just hear it better or feel it better when it's yeah down uh, because you know I still I mean, downstroke is something that still takes a lot of effort and in fact since I'd have to pick it anyway doing it this way it's just not mm -hmm. comfortable so how long have you been playing bass then off Same and on since the beginning okay I mean, with the band? No, just yourself. Uh, probably since the mid 2000s. Okay. I've played in, other, in a few other bands with bass. It's, I've always liked it as an instrument. It's just it feels. Uh, I don't think people realize how much fun it is until you actually play it in a band, where you realize Especially what sort one. of, you know, what sort of spot it is. You know, and I'm not by all means a proficient bass player. To me, it's always based in function of everybody else, and I play mostly with the pick. You know, but I love it. You know, I'm, I'm getting more into the nuances of it the more as we go. You know, especially now that we have a hybrid rig with analog and digital. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. So speaking of nuance, you've got Trent, Robin, and you all playing guitar parts. Yeah. Is that hard to, or to like balance out or know when or you have it all planned out? Well, I I, I definitely made an effort uh, to listen to what Robin sounds where to make yeah. sure that uh, they sounded complementary as opposed to fighting, and that's always been a lot of fun. Um, at the end of the day, I did start with an all software rig because having started with synthesizers at the beginning, uh, guitar was just integrated as a, you know, as a, not, a, not as a filler, but like a few tracks during the set might have guitar or a bass maybe once mm -hmm. every week or so. Uh, and I was using guitar rig and software for everything. And then for some reason, it just didn't feel right for bass particularly. It just didn't feel in ears that it sounded as good as, and I realized that my settings were always pretty much the same as far as the source sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at home I had a uh, beautiful Metabarba head, which is an Italian company, it's an mm -hmm. M0, and I loved it, and I recorded a lot of bass through it as well. So uh, I talked to them, and uh, they were kind enough to develop, since I only needed a few good sounds, to develop, uh, develop a rack tube preamp MIDI, and that's what I'm using. I'm using the clean channel for clean guitars and it's more tuned for bass as well. So I use that for clean bass. And then there's a crunch channel and a lead channel. Each channel has a bright switch, MIDI recallable, dedicated, and a dedicated boost. Okay. So are you using the Mezzo Barba for bass and guitar or just bass? For everything. Yeah, oh, okay. bass and guitar. Yeah. So it's cut, you're using like a hybrid setup. Yeah, basically the preamp is tube and hasn't failed once, it's just a solid meat and potato sound for bass and guitar, so that's my source. And then I use uh, Torpedo's Wall of Sound, or sorry, Two Notes Wall of Sound, which is basically the software version of Torpedo um, for cab emulation and speaker emulation and, and power amp emulation. Uh, we run as a brain to the rig main stage, both as a mixer and as a sound generation device for like plugins and whatnot, and for effects. Um, so basically, I'm able to save the speaker settings within main stage laptop set list, basically. So it's very easy to be able to, to configure or make changes from here or from there via remote control, you know, not during so the show. So are you but. controlling most of that or is your tech, tech control? Well, everything has been decided. Not okay. many changes are done. I mean, as you see on the RJM, we had an expression pedal. That might be assigned to something in specific songs, but most of the big decisions, I don't switch like gotcha. boosts or anything live. In fact, to me, it's much easier to, uh, to have three different presets as opposed to having a pedal to come in and out because my playing is less based on evolutions of the same patch within the same song. So there might be a radical change, like in songs like The Wretched, where I go from a real, weird 8-bit uh, reduced 
sound to a full-on distortion pan the two cabinets sort of sound for the choruses you know if you'd have to do it with pedals it'd be a lot of tap dancing or a lot of you know you probably have to live with Bob Brasher for a month at his house <laughs> to figure it out so with software it's very easy because I can have two patches and I still have an analog very um, to me very good sounding bass building block and the rest taking advantage of the you know the fluidity of software basically right. are you a mad scientist then or well I don't you know I mean, this is the first time I speak to human beings in a while so. <laughs> Alessandro you've got a complex setup here you've got your mezzabarba preamp mm -hmm. and then you've got um, your digital presets but you have analog pedals as well I so do I have a few um, not many I have a drop pedal as I was telling you before so I don't have to bring another guitar tuned in C or or lower depending on what the track is and then I have a metal zone that I mostly use for uh, like the old school you know stuff off broken you know and it's literally that sound uh, I used to use it via software before and then it's like you know let's fuck it let's get the real thing and uh, it sounds what you would expect like a metal zone it's amazing <laughs> and then I have um, a Maleko Ass Master which is <laughs> it's a it's a beautiful That's pedal on bass, bass. Yeah. yeah yeah and I, I use it on guitar as well uh, it's amazing you barely had to do anything to it and it just makes it sound a anything sounds great through it and then we use an industrial electric um, reverb pedal which is a very unique and noisy and beautifully broken pedal uh, in a good way that okay. uh, it's full of character and we use it both on bass and guitar particularly the new material off the three EPs that's what we use it for and I think that's it as far as pedals yeah it's a fairly simple pedal setup. There's room for improvement, but uh, oh, not improvement for expansion. I don't think there's room for improvement. Always with it's the a, sounds you guys it's do. It's a foolproof rig. Um, we never had issues. Now that we run wireless, it's even easier. The main issue we had was with the cable coming to my corner. Uh, we have moving trays with lights. They would cut the cable if it wasn't Ooh. timed right. So I would have a lot of noise or like cutouts. You know what I mean? But now that we switch to wireless, I feel free again. Oh, great. Alessandro, thank you so much um, for taking time to talk to us today. It thank was an you honor. For me. We're really excited for the great show tonight. Time. Thank you for come visit more often. Yeah, you should thank come you. visit. You need to talk to people more often. Yeah, we like I it. do. It's true. There's too many toys here, man. <laughs> I can't. Well, why do I need people for? I mean, <laughs> I do. <but. laughs> this is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.